Hey guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is climbing stairs. This question says that it takes n steps to reach the top and we are on a staircase and you can climb by either using one step at a time or two steps. And our task is to find out how many distinct ways you can climb on the top. So we'll be given an integer n as input. So if n is equal to 2, it means there are two stairs. So this is the first stair and this is the second stair. And this is our target we want to reach. So initially we are at the beginning. So you can climb this target by taking one step first. And from here you will take another step. So this is one way. So answer was initially zero and this was one way. Or you are initially at zero and you can directly take two steps to reach the top. So this is another way. So the answer is two. Now let's take n is equal to three. So it means there are three steps. So initially we are at zero and our task is to reach the third step. So let's declare a variable answer which will count the number of ways. Initially it is zero. So first let's see how we can reach the first step. So this step you can reach in one way only. So this is one. Now let's see how we can reach the second step. You can take one step here and take one more step here. So this is one way and you can directly take two steps. So these are the two ways you can reach step two. So how can you reach step three? You can take one step at a time. So the answer is one. You can take two steps at once and then take one step. So this is another way or you can first take one step we will reach here and now you can take two steps. So this is one more way. So total the answer is three. So three is the answer. So here if you observe you are using the previous two values how many ways you are reaching one and how many ways you are reaching two and adding the both. So there is one way here and there are two ways to reach step two. So two plus one is three. So three is matching. So if you want to confirm that let us take n is equal to five. So we already calculated you can reach step one in one way that is directly from here. You can reach step two in two ways that is you can take one step each or take two steps directly. And from three onwards you can add the previous two values because you can reach a step by taking one step or two steps. So you can reach three by checking how many ways there are to reach from here and from n minus two. So this is n minus one. So this is n minus two step. So you have to add both. So two plus one is equal to three. So there are three ways like we saw in the previous example. Now for here, this is n minus one and this is n minus two because n is equal to four. n minus one is three. n minus two is two. Three plus two is five. And for this, this is n minus one and this is n minus two. So add the both. It will take five steps for n minus one. So five and n minus two, it will take three steps equal to 3. So for n is equal to 5, it will take 8 ways. Since we are choosing the optimal answer to reach n minus 1 step and n minus 2 step, we can use these both sub problems and fix our greater problem. So this concept is called dynamic programming. So in this we are going to declare an array of size n plus 1 with index position starting from 0 until n. So 0th way, there is one way to reach this step, right? So that is why dp of 0 is going to be 1. There is one way to reach step 1, right? So dp of 1 is going to be 1. So we are going to use these two values to build up our rest of our answer. So dp of 2 is going to be 1 plus 1. This is 2. dp of 3 is going to be 1 plus 2 which is 3. dp of 4 is going to be 3 plus 2. So 5. And dp of n is going to be dp of n minus 1 plus dp of n minus 2. So 5 plus 3 which is 8. So if n is equal to 5, 8 is our answer which is matching here. Now let's implement these steps in a Java program. Going to the function given to us, this is the function name and the return type is an integer because we have to return an integer representing the distinct ways we can reach the top and this is the input given to us n. Like I said, let us declare an array of size n plus 1. This will be the dp array. So first we need two sub problems, right? We are going to store the values 0 and 1. So every index inside this dp array, so dp of i is going to represent the number of ways we can reach the ith step. So dp of 0 is the number of ways we can represent the 0th step. dp of 1 is the number of ways we can reach the first step. Since dp of 0 is going to be 1 because there is one way you can reach the 0th step. So this is not practically possible because there are no steps at all. So n is equal to 0. So if you take theoretically, you can imagine if there are 0 step, us being there on the step is the one way possible. And now dp of 1 is number of ways we can reach n equal to first step is 1 because it says you can take either one step or two steps. And now we have our two sub problems and these store the values which represent the optimal ways we can reach that respective step. Now we can start our iteration from 
step 2 until step n. So for that we are going to use a loop and then use these two values to build as sub problems to build the larger problem. So we start with the second step because we have our answer for 0 and 1 step. So from second step until the sixth step we will get the number of ways and finally you know our answer is present in the last index. So dp of n we have to find the answer for dp of n. So here we can return dp of n. So whatever value is stored inside dp of n will represent the number of ways we can reach the nth step. So that is why you can return it. And now I'm going to calculate the value for dp of i. So dp of i is equal to the value of dp of i minus 1 and dp of i minus 2. So i is starting from 2. i minus 1 is 1. So dp of 1 is 1 and i is 2, dp of i minus 2, 2 minus 2 is dp of 0, so this value. So we have to add these two values to calculate dp of 2. So dp of i is equal to dp of i minus 1 plus dp of i minus 2. So this will happen for all the elements inside the dp array and finally we have our answer present at dp of n because we need to calculate the number of ways to reach step n. We have the number of ways to reach step in dp of n so that will be returned as the output. Now let's try to run the code. The test cases are being accepted. Let's submit the code. And our solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n where n is the number of steps. And the space complexity is also O of n because we are using a dp array of size n to store our output. You can also solve this in O of 1 space. So if you observe this formula is representing the Fibonacci series. So you can implement the logic for Fibonacci series. Let me show you the code for that. So here as you can see we are building our Fibonacci series inside the variable answer and answer is going to store the previous two values 1 and 2's values. 1 is 1 and 2 is also 1. So answer will be calculated with the sum of 1 plus 2 and in the next iteration 2 will become 1 and 1 will become answer. And this goes on until we reach n and this series represents the Fibonacci series and this is the code for that and finally we will return the variable answer. Now let's try to submit this code. And this is also getting accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n and the space complexity is O of 1 because we are not using a dp array here to form our output. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.